Hi, and welcome to my series, Can I Rig It? Where I take random objects from real life and see if I can rig them in Blender. And today I'm gonna try to rig this car jack. And I'm gonna do it in the following steps. First, I'm gonna create the bones. Then I will set up an IK system for both sides, control both with one master controller, use the transform constraint to make the rod rotate whenever the controller changes its position. Then I'll limit the movement range of the controller, and in the end, I will set up the visuals to make everything more accessible. By the way, I'm Nico, a 3D artist, and my passion are robots and other mechanical creations. So here we are in our Blender scene, and here we have our car jack. This is what they usually look like. I got the screenshot from um, this YouTube channel here. They have like SolidWorks content mostly. And this is a good template for um, how a car jack works. But before I set up any armature, place any bones, I'd like to recreate the geometry first so that we know where to put in the bones and how it actually will look like in the end. By the way, if you want to follow along, you can get this file here in the link in the description below. Okay, so this is our car jack. And now we get to the part why you probably clicked on this video, which is the rigging part. Hey, Nico from editing here. So while editing this episode, I just realized that I almost never mention when I go into edit mode and when I go into pose mode, which are two vastly different modes and they all have their own purposes. So in edit mode is where you create new bones, you define their length and you also parent them to each other. And in pose mode, you, well, you animate and pose the bones, but you also use all the constraints in that mode. And to fix that, I decided to use a little indicator right here. Uh, this will always show you in what mode I am currently. But for you to kind of internalize it, whenever the bones are blue, I'm in pose mode. And whenever they are yellow or orange, I'm in edit mode. Okay, now back to explain and echo. So we start first by um, defining a base bone. So we start in the middle. We don't start with these ones. First, it's good to have like the root bone somewhere at the bottom so we can um, anchor every other bone to this one. So when we want to move something, we can just move the root bone and everything will move with it. Okay, so shift A, create a single bone. It's pretty big, so let's scale it down. And I will also set the armature to the front so we can always see what we're doing. I will apply the scale first. That's always a good thing to do. And uh, I will just lay down the root bone just like this by 90 degrees. And now we're gonna create the first bone, which comes here. So put the three cursor to this point here, to our first hinge. And by the way, I'm gonna use the following shortcuts a lot, which is tab to go into edit mode to edit the bones and control tab, which is go into pose mode. That's why we're gonna set up the constraints. And again, shift A to add a new bone. Let's make it way smaller and let's move it to this point here. We don't have to be super thorough. Now we're gonna extrude with E, next one, and the next one to this point here. Okay, so far so good. We are almost there. The next thing that I would do is copy this whole setup. So first I'm gonna put the 3D cursor back to the origin. So we have it in the middle and I can in edit mode, I can just duplicate it with Shift D and then mirror it with Control M. But first I need to set the transformation pivot point to the 3D cursor. And now when I press Control M and select the X axis, I can just mirror it. And now I wanna use the IK method. So an IK or inverse kinematics is when we add another bone. So we can extrude it here maybe, but we're gonna, with Alt P, we're gonna clear the parent so that it's a completely separate bone. And we're gonna add an IK or inverse kinematics constraint to this bone here, which is this here, because it's the next one in the chain. So this will be our controller. This will be the one that will get all the rules and all the constraints attached to it. So we're gonna go here to bone constraints, add a inverse kinematics, and now it asks for target. The target is the controller. So we're gonna first select the armature, then the bone, which is bone seven, but we could call it IK. And now when we move this one, you see, ooh, the whole chain is actually moving, which is what we want. So, so far so good. And the things that we wanna do is move this one up and down. So as you see, 
it should move like this. So this is already kind of working, but we still have a little bit of work to do. So first of all, we still need to attach these bones to the root bone so that this one will be the first one in a chain. We do this by just selecting both, then the root bone last, control P, keep offset. And now this one is the first one in the whole chain. But now what happened is when you click on the bone with the IK setup, you see this yellow dotted line. This shows how far the influence chain is reaching. And now, because this is the first bone in the whole chain, it goes up, down until this one. But now everything is moving and that's, that's not what we want to have. So we can limit this chain. And when we go here to the bone constraints and here we have to set up chain length. So zero is that it goes completely down to the bottom until the last bone but we're gonna limit it. So we want to go to just these two bones to this point here. So we're gonna go to one. Now the yellow line is going until here. Two, now it's going here. So you can see it, the influence is now just limited to these two bones and we wanna have three bones. So set it to three. Now everything is working well again. So, so far so good. And now I'm gonna show you the quick way to add an IK constraint. So I'm gonna delete this one. Then I'm gonna select the IK controller first then with shift the second bone and press shift i and now it just says add ik to active bone yes and now we have this whole chain generated with without choosing the actual bones but it's still going to the root bone so we first need to limit the chain again and we have the same setup now we're going to do the same thing for the other side so again extrude a new bone disconnect it so clear the parent and now select the controller, which is also IK, let's call it IK2. Shift, select the next bone, shift I, boom, and limit the chain length to just this one. So now if we select both and move them up and down, we kind of already have this carjack motion, but I don't want to constantly select these two bones to move it. So we're gonna create a third one. This will be in the middle, maybe a little bit bigger. And we're going to just parent these two to this one. So control P, get offset. Now, when we move this one, both move at the same time. Now, the next part is that I would like to have a little system here in place where whenever I move this bone up and down, I would like to have this rod here to actually rotate. So we're going to add one more bone and this will also get constraints that follow certain rules. So let's go here. This is a nice place to put it. I'm gonna put the 3D cursor to this point. I'm gonna go into the armature, edit mode, and shift A to add another bone. This is way too big. So let's scale it down. I'm gonna put it like this. And this will be the bone that will be driving this, this rod. First of all, we're gonna attach this bone to this bone here. So select this one. Let's shift select this one. Control P, keep offset. So now it's, it's moving with this bone. And yeah, okay, so far so good. This is already what we want, but we wanna have it rotate the whole time. So there is a constraint that is called transformation. So you can choose a different bone to control some features of this bone here. And we're gonna add, obviously, again, the armature, this IK1, let's call it maybe main. So the main bone will now drive some features from this bone. And you can choose here, map from to. So what we want is now that the position of this bone on its x-axis drives the rotation of this bone. And we can set it up fairly easy. So we want the location of this bone here, which is map from, to drive the rotation of this one here. So we change map to to rotation, first of all. We're gonna also change everything from world space to local space, because later on when you maybe want to rotate it or move it, that will also influence the constraints, which we don't want. We just want them to work on a local level. And the local movement of this one here, let's say, let's show also the axis. We have here the X and the Z axis, and we want to use the Y axis to drive the rotation. So the way we set this up is we choose the map from, from the location, obviously, because the location is changing up and down, and we want it to drive the rotation of this bone here, so the map two. And with both bones, we use both of their Y location and rotation. So this one moves in its local Y location, and this will rotate on its local Y location also. So we want to have the source axis for this one is Y. 
So we take from this list here the Y and we want to the Y axis of this bone to drive it also. And now we choose the amount of rotations that we want to have. And here we are pretty flexible because the amount of rotations is very vague with such tight screw. So we can just kind of eyeball it. And let's say, let's start with minimum minus 720 and plus 720. Maybe this will be okay, but we're gonna do a little test first. And what we still need to define is in which height the rotation should be applied. You see the Y axis changes. So the maximum should be maybe around here. So at about 5.5 and we go down. The minimum should be maybe minus 15. So let's put it in here. So let's reset it. And we put the min and max to minus 15 and the max is five. Now, if we move it in this, this frame, yeah, now you can see that it act, it's actually rotating. It stops, so maybe we should maybe go a little bit, maybe to six or maybe to seven, just to be sure. We can also put 10 in there. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, just, just to be sure that it rotates. And now you see when we go below 15, it stops because that's the frame that we defined. So this is basically it. And what we can do now is attach all the geometry to the bones, which is fairly easy. And what makes it even easier is when you go into edit and uncheck lock object modes. So now when you're in pose mode, you can still select the geometry, which makes it a little bit more easier. So we select the geometry first, then with shift the bone, control P and we add bone. So first we select the geometry, then the bone again, control P to bone. We're going to do the same with this one here. I'm going to repeat it for all the other bones. And also I'm going to add these ones here to the other geometry because that's a little bit simpler to do. Okay, and now, so everything's parented. Now when I move the bone up and down, the car jack is almost working. And now you maybe see a few kinks here and there that we still need to address. Also, this movement is still possible, but we don't want that. We just want the car jack to go up and down and have the control only to be the up and down movement. But first of all, this piece goes a little bit up and down because it follows this bone here. So what we can do is, because this bone here is already very flat, it should also have the same rotation or the flatness as the root bone. We can just use a copy rotation constraint. Maybe we should also put it in front of the other one. So that's the base level uh, from which the other constraint is working on. And we're gonna use the, not the cube, the armature, and then we're gonna call it root the root bone and now it will have the same rotation as the root bone so now when i rotate it you see it has the same rotation but now when i move this one no matter what i do with this bone here the rotation always stays flat but we don't want these movements here because the geometry is clipping here through the the other geometry we don't want to have that so we're going to limit the controller to just move up and down and we do this also with a bone constraint which is limit location gonna limit its local space we're gonna limit everything so that it doesn't move first of all from zero to zero so when i try to move it nothing happens but we want to have it move just a little bit up and down and we already know the amount of motion which is on the y-axis the minimum was minus 15 i believe and the plus will be plus 10. and now when i move it it stops i can't move it any further and when i go up it doesn't go any further, but it's still a little bit too much. So I'm going to keep it up there. I'm just going to limit its movement, let's say six. And at the bottom, maybe a little bit higher. So maybe minus 14, that should be okay. And now when we move it up and down and I don't even need to select the axis, I just press G. And the only thing that it can do, is just move up and down in this range. We have also this root bone here and what it does, it kind of works as an opposite of the uh, IK controller. So when I move it, you see it moves the other part. But this is also introducing some problems here with, with the whole setup. So what we can do now 
is if we reset the controller again, we can parent this IK controller to the root bone. So whenever we move the root bone, everything will move with it. So select this one, select this one, keep offset. And now when I move the root bone, the whole thing moves. If I rotate it, it rotates and everything is staying in place. So now this is working and that's pretty much it. There is one little thing that makes maybe everything a little bit easier, which is having bone collections and also have the bones have a different shape. So we immediately know what we are using. So to have the bone collections, we go into the armature tab, create a new collection. Let's call it maybe main. And with just selecting the main bones that we need, which is this one and maybe the root bone, we can press M and apply them to this collection. So now we can hide everything else. And we just have these two bones. I think maybe we should also increase the amount of rotation in the transformation constraint because it rotates, but not, not enough. So let's maybe say it should rotate like three times the amount. So now when we go up and down, it rotates way more. And this is more similar to the actual amount that it would rotate, I assume. So, and for the look of the bones, there's a very cool add-on called Bone Widget, link in the description. And when you install it, you can choose a bone. You can select one of many cool shapes that you can use. For this one, this arrow might be very handy. And just select Create. And now we have this little arrow that is pretty cool. We can hide all the other bones. And now you have this nice little indicator what it actually does. And root bones actually oftentimes get this one here. It also is called root. Create and it has the wrong rotation, but we can fix that very easily in the bone properties, viewport display, and I believe it's the Y axis. Yes, we can just rotate it to 90 degrees. Now we have our own nice root bone. We have this controller and our card jack is working. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any suggestions on what I should rig next, then please leave a comment below. And maybe in the next video, I will rig this item that you suggested. Other than that, if you're interested in more rigging, then maybe my course on my Patreon would be interesting for you. There I teach all the basics in mechanical rigging. So if that sparked your interest, maybe that will be a cool next step. Also, if you'd like to support this channel, then please consider joining my Patreon. That's the best way to support my short film production and all these tutorials here. Other than that, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.